Today, I want to go over when to use pointers in Go. So I'm going to assume you already know how to work with pointers and how memories are stored in two different places. We have multiple stacks for each Go routine in Go, and the rest are stored in heap. But unlike other languages where you can explicitly allocate variables to heap, in Golang, it's a little bit different. So the common idea behind pointers is that your application will be faster because you'll avoid copying data around all the time if you pass by value. However, passing pointers in Go is often slower than passing values because of garbage collection in the heap and escape analysis. Escape analysis is where Go compiler determines whether the variable can reside on the stack or should be escaped to the heap. So even if you have a pointer variable, it doesn't necessarily get allocated to the heap and it can actually reside on the stack. And we'll look at the example later. So before I actually show you the code example here, I wanna go over this very important uh, GopherCon presentation by Jacob Walker called Understanding Allocations, the Stack and the Heap. And I will share the link in the description box below. I highly recommend you go over that and understand how uh, variables are stored in the stack and the heap. So in Go, as I said, you don't know if the variable lives on the stack or the heap. And one important key point that Jacob mentioned is to not make decision based on the performance, but on the correctness first, right? And this will make more sense as I go over the rest of this stuff. But typically sharing down stays on the stack and sharing up escapes to the heap. I'll share what this means. So when you share down, I have two examples here. So we have the func main where we define the variable called n and store the value for, and we are basically passing n variable down into the square val func right here. And whether we pass by value or pass by pointer, if we are passing this down, we're sharing this down to a child function if you, if you want to call it that way, um, it will usually be stayed on the stack, right? So let's look at another example. In this example, we have the func main, which calls the do something function. And inside this function, we declare a variable called n and we share the memory address of n. So this variable n at line 13 would be storing the memory address of this variable at line 18. So if you want to visualize this, we have a stack and with func main, we have a stack frame created and initially the value of n will be nil, right? When we call do something function, it's going to return the memory address of n that stays locally within the stack frame here. And then when we return, the n at line 13 would be pointing to this memory address with inside the do something stack frame. But once do something is returned, we know that the stack frame is no longer valid. So this will lead to dangling pointer. And that's the problem if we are using stack for this kind of scenario. So go compiler will actually store the variable in the heap for cases like this. So to sum up Jacob's presentation at GopherCon, the compiler must allocate the variable on the heap if it cannot prove that the variable is not referenced after the function returns. So values that are commonly allocated in the heap are values shared with pointers or variables stored in interface variables. And that's because for variables living inside an interface, the escape analysis can no longer prove that it is safe to be on the stack so it will typically be stored in the heap. But as I mentioned, you should go and watch that GopherCon by Jacob Walker if you want to uh, understand this in depth. So lastly, let's look at the code example and see where we want to use pointers in four different cases that I wrote down here. 
And these points are from this blog post right here, which I'll put the link in the description box. Feel free to read that through. But I just wanted to show you an example that's more practical. So the first point here is when we copy large structs. So if we look at this code here, I'm using domain driven design architecture in this project. But if you're not familiar with that, it's it's OK. So I'm going to start from the repository layer, which is the bottommost layer. So what's happening in this simple project is basically we have the repository, which is being called from the service. So service struct contains the user repository field. And using that user repository field, we call the get user function that's defined in the repository. And then this service layer is called from the handler function. So if you see here, handler struct contains the user service field and inside the get user function, oops, inside the get user function, it calls the user service get user and so on. And then of course this handler is called from main and this is passed into the router like that. So if you look at the repository, we define a user struct and then we interact with the database to store what we have from the database into the struct. And then we return the pointer to the user struct in this function, right? If you remember from the example earlier, we are actually sharing up. So this would be escaped to the heap. So this user pointer, we would return it to the service layer because service layer calls the user repository. And we see that the user here, the user variable here is a pointer to the user struct. And then again, it returns the pointer of user struct to the handler and so on, right? We see that this is a user struct. So in this kind of scenario where we defined uh, a struct inside the bottommost layer, we would just create one user struct and pass it around pointing to the same memory address instead of copying that again and again. So that's one example of copying large structs around. The second example is for mutability of the receiver. So I'm gonna share this uh, post that I found. And I'll put this in the uh, description box below. But if you see here, if the method needs to modify the receiver, the receiver must be a pointer. Right. But in our example, if you look at this, we have this receiver function with our receiver being a pointer. But then we're not really doing anything with the, the receiver. We're not really modifying that. But I think it's a common practice to define your receiver as a pointer receiver function for consistency. Because even if we're not really modifying anything in this function, we might actually have another function that, that modifies something, right? That modifies our receiver. We can have another function. It could be, you know, it could be modifying something, right? So for consistency sake, we would keep all the receiver as pointers. That's just what I've observed, but of course there's no answer to this. This is really uh, up to your discretion. And the last point I wanna go over is in situation where we wanna signify true absence. So if we look at our example, we have a user struct where we have the age with a field type of pointer to int. So the reason we wanna keep this age as a pointer is because this value is optional. So if we consider example where the field type of age is just regular int, what happens if there is no 
value for age in the JSON that's passed to the backend. If a user or a client doesn't have an input for the age field, the value would be stored as zero because zero is the default value of int variable type. And that's not something we want. So for fields that we want to make nullable, we would make it a pointer to integer to signify true absence. So that would be the last reason that you would use pointers in Go. So you have looked at some of the different examples where we use pointers in Go. I hope that was helpful. Thank you all for watching.